I'm going to show you how you can turn a Korg MS-2000 synthesizer into a drum machine, complete with kick, snare, and hi-hat. Plus, you'll still be able to play a bass line and a lead sound over the top of it simultaneously. If you're familiar with the specifications of an MS-2000, this would seem impossible since it can only play two timbres at the same time, but I assure you this and more can be done with careful programming. I'm going to start off with the drum sounds. Now the first step is to initialize the program with edit and then utility, giving you a very basic program. Now you can change oscillator 1 to cross mod, and I'll give you a, a sine wave. Now to turn this into a kick drum, use the first virtual patch and route envelope 1 to pitch. Drop the sustain and adjust decay so that the pitch quickly drops from high to low. For the snare and hi-hat, route keyboard tracking to noise level. Now, on the left-hand side, it'll be clean. But on the right, you start to get a very different sound. The filter needs to be in high-pass mode, fully tracked to the keyboard. This time, tracking allows the kick to retain bass frequencies because the filter isn't active. But at the top, you get a hi-hat, and add a little noise to the snare. The built-in tracking on the filter isn't good enough, so you'll need another virtual patch to get it at 200%. Using the amplifier envelope, you can tighten the sound up by dropping the sustain and shortening the decay. So this whole drum set took a little over a minute to make, and it's only using one timbre. The rest of it is just fine-tuning, adding a bit of resonance to bring the snare out, If you add a bit of release to the volume envelope, you can control open and closed hi-hats simply by how quickly you take your finger off. You'll also be able to control the kick and snare release. Distortion can be cool, but it will affect all of the sounds. have to be careful because it can sound like crap very, very quickly. Try different envelope settings on both envelopes. Change the oscillator. There's lots of stuff you can do to make your own unique sounds. You can get kind of 808 smooth kicks if you'd like. You can change the sound of the snare quite a bit. Once you get a sound that you like, then move on to the drum machine part, which first uses the arpeggiator to trigger a steady stream of notes. The latch will keep it running. The beat itself uses the mod sequencer, which by default is set to pitch. So crank all the knobs and you get a steady stream of hi-hats. Lower one to uh, 12 o'clock, you get a kick, and then to three o'clock and you get a snare. It's kind of similar to Roland style programming, except that you adjust knobs to select which sound you want. If you want to change dynamics, change the second mod sequence to affect volume. The sound may cut in and out when you're adjusting from the menu, so you don't want to do this live, uh, but you can adjust the knobs in real time all you'd like. So if you switch it over to the second mod sequence, changing the knobs will change the volume of that particular beat, so you can lower the volume of the hi-hats, but give it kind of a rhythmic feel by increasing the eighth note between each quarter note on the beat. And there you go. Now, before you, uh, you move to programming the bass and lead sounds, 
Play around with the parameters and you'll see that there are some things you can do uh, that most drum machines can't. Real analog drum machines are basically synthesizers, but they have very restricted control over the parameters. When you make drum sounds using synthesizers, you have a much wider variety of things that you can affect. I particularly like adjusting the envelope depth on the filter. Or the delay if it's set to very short. Or do it at the same time. If you want that Commodore 64 SID station sound, change it to square wave. Once you have a drum sound that you're happy with, then you can move to bass and lead. First, change the program from single mode to split in the common parameters. For now, make the split point at F sharp right above the lowest F on the keyboard. And also, change arpeggiator so that it's only affecting timbre 1, the drum sounds. When you change it to a split, timbre 2 will be a basic sawtooth patch again. Now I'm not going to get into how to program a bass sound. I'm going to assume that you already know how to do that if you're still watching this. But I'll give you a couple of hints. You, you'll want to lower the volume, otherwise the bass is going to be too loud for the drums. But if you want the lead to sound different from the bass, uh, there are a couple of tricks. Set oscillator 1 to cross mod and keep control all the way down. And set oscillator 2 to square wave. Oscillator 2 will be providing the bulk of the bass sound. You can detune it if you want that kind of really thick sound. Now go to the first virtual patch on timbre 2 and route keyboard tracking to oscillator 1, control 1. And that will make it so that uh, you don't have ring modulator on the left, but you do on the right. You can also do this with pulse width modulation or if you scale tracking to affect uh, oscillator 2, uh, you can do it with hard sync, so you get a, a hard sync on the right and a, a bass sound on the left. Uh, there's a couple of ways to separate the bass and the lead sound. So that first example at the very beginning, which seemed impossible, should now make sense. If you want a really thick sound, sometimes it's best not to do the split and just concentrate all of timbre 2 on the bass. Finally, try using the mod sequencer on the second timbre for an arpeggiator. 